most people are confused on taxes. They want to understand how to feel comfortable keeping their current job and still sending the IRS and the SSA letters. They are not in a position to, qu to quit yet where they work. They need the money. Okay, so I've, I've explained this through. The confusion lies, I believe, in the fact of how the person wants to be designated as. Let me explain. When I removed my signature from the Social Security, there's two choices on our letter, to completely remove your signature, never use again, or to utilize it as the beneficial interest for the registered organization, but don't gain credit off of it. So there's a couple of things that could happen with the IRS. You may not be able to file tax returns whether you like it or not. Um, and that's a great, that's a great Willy Wonka gold letter that you'll, you'll get, chocolate bar gold letter that you'll get from the IRS, maybe. And I said, maybe. But the reality is if you, it's an election to pay taxes. And if anybody doubts that, why is there a thing called revocation of election to pay taxes? So the question is, is how comfortable do you feel letting your HR department know to replace your social with zeros on the, on the W-4 or the W-9? How comfortable do you feel? Um, because you can lawfully elect to continue to use the social for the registered organization and put all caps on the W-4, meaning the all caps name, the registered organization, and then you put the social security number and then you sign with the word by and a full living signature with non-assumpted all rights reserved and uh, beneficiary at the end. The reason, well, first, you may have a you may have an HR person that says, "Oh hell no," because they don't know any different. Out here on the West Coast, they identify with illegal aliens all the time in the job workforce place, and so they just put zeros under the social, because you can go to the Social Security Administration. Guess what? It is a, um, it is not a requirement for a, an alien, non-resident or resident, to have a Social Security number because they can't force it. There's no such thing. It's all voluntary. And so there's these aliens, both illegal and legal. They've changed the term to undocumented worker. <laughs> um, and they go and apply for jobs here in California, Arizona, Texas, you know, all these other states, um, New Mexico, and so on. And they just put zeros on, on because the HR departments are, are frankly quite used to it. Now, some companies are large enough that they're not going to stop taking some taxes out of those checks. And some companies are going to completely stop taking taxes out because they just don't know any different. And that's what you told them to do. Some companies are going to take certain portions of those taxes out because that's what they've been instructed to do. The question is, and this is the ambiguity, and this is why the confusion is like, it's not the confusion of me with being a state citizen with no social. There's no way they can tax me. It's the confusion that I went to a company that is a U.S. corporation company registered in Delaware, Nevada, whatever, and they have certain obligations that they're told they need to be met. And one is as an employee, you need to have a certain requirement. One is a social, maybe. Most companies don't realize that you don't need a social to have somebody work for you. But there is a, a Supreme Court ruling that still requires certain federal taxes being taken out, even for somebody that doesn't have a social. So the question is, why would I want to be an employee of anything? Whether it's the United States or a subcorporation known as Google or the company you, know, you work for, why would you want to be an employee? I got it. You told me you need to make a wage. So that is a benefit, whether you want to hear that or not. You're working at a company that's a subcorporation to the United States. You might have, because every HR department is a little bit different, some nuancy issues. I got VPs at uh, huge banks 
that have figured out how to get out and contract under W-9 through their foundation. I have federal agents, same thing, where they quit on the employment side and went on the contractor side um, with full clearances to the president. Um, the point I'm trying to make is it's the employer that you're going to have issues with, if any. And if you walk in there with a box of paperwork that you've done and you walk in looking like a sovereign citizen, you know, whatever that looks like, I always picture them with long beards and smelly and just came from their tent and they got a half of a driver's license in their hand because they cut it in half instead of being smart. <laughs> why is this a serpent soft as a dove contracting that license properly to be the beneficiary instead of the liability or the trustee, which is the person that is held accountable. Okay. So we can not be held accountable but if you're at a corporation and you're you're trying to get a job and you want to work for them, they may not have a qualified HR officer that's going to do the research to validate and verify your status and standing. And by putting zeros in there, may feel like they have liability and they may not want to. That's just a fact. So you're going to have to work with them explaining and showing how it is done. And maybe and maybe not will they take taxes out and maybe or maybe not will it be certain or all of it. So we can't sit there and control as his advocates or Kelby and say, I know this with every HR department. It's the same with law enforcement. Law enforcement has no clue about state citizens. They don't understand that Ben Franklin was never a United States citizen. And the FBI is going around and training law enforcement that there's this group of people, they're so dangerous. They're more dangerous than MS-13. They're more dangerous than the United States government. They're more dangerous than the United States military. There's only been 20 issues where people have been hurt by people that call themselves sovereign citizens. But the FBI has listed those people sovereign citizens as the number one domestic terrorist threat freedom is the number one domestic terrorist threat freedom is well if the federal government thinks that must be good the federal government says a doctor of natural medicine is the number one threat to covid I'm going to listen to the doctor. If the federal government says something, anything, I know the opposite to be true. So the question is, is I'm sorry, I don't control all law enforcement, but I know how to handle them. I don't control judges, but I know how to handle it. I don't control HR, but I know what I would do. And I wouldn't have a job. I wouldn't work for the man or the woman. I would go start something or have them work with me in the private and take my time and show them. Because they write checks to corporations all the time that submit invoices and they do W-9s with them all the time. Why wouldn't they with you? Why wouldn't they with you? We give you the W-9, we give you the private foundation, we give you all the ability to operate on the private side instead of through the public registered organization with the social. So the ambiguity to the question that Rob asked from most members is, how do we handle HR departments that aren't used to this? So the transition that we're going to have to do as a nation is going to be huge. It's the same level of transition of training of anything that needs to be adopted on a worldwide basis. Look at the element of COVID, how long it took. They had a worldwide operation in place and, and, and to sink it in, it took, you know, a good few months, bring that down into a worldwide global scale. We don't have anywhere near those resources. We're a, we're a, a few million people in this country that are waking up and trying to get out and the entire counter narrative to our movement is to keep us in chains and keep us in their custody. And if you saw the letters we get from the Department of State, you would say to yourself, this is fraud if you knew what we knew because they treat everybody differently. 
oh, do we have a huge lawsuit? And I've been praying every prayer on Sundays and with our team and myself for a global law firm, international, non bar carded, um, that can assist us with dealing with the Department of State to hold them accountable because the law is so, so plain and clear. So the question is, is do you want to be an employee or do you want to be a contractor or a private worker? And, uh, and all those things are doable. And so, you know, people say, I can't have a, I can't have a UPS box on my driver's license. I do. People say, I can't uh, get a bank account open with Bank of America as a 501A. I got one open. People can't say, I, I can't do all these things. I get them done. Why? Because I take the time and I don't like act like a, a blumbering idiot trying to get the process done. Not saying people do. They just don't know any better. And so how do you relay all the information that we know into getting people to smoothly operate as a state citizen when they first are operating in fear? Listen to the questions people ask me all the time. Fear, 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 all the time. So if people stopped operating in fear and started uh, understanding who they are, it's just a matter of controlling the person at the bank and getting their senior manager. And your worst case scenario is getting Kelby on the phone or getting Rob on the phone. He just had a call. Guy could not get an account open. Bank of America or whoever he was at. Tracy got me on the phone. This is what we do. We're here to help. I told the operator at the bank or the service representative, the manager, said, I know something new. I'm going to tell you, we've done thousands of these. I was operating as private counsel for them. I don't care if they thought I was an attorney. I was private counsel, attorney in fact. Go look up those terms, private counsel, attorney in fact, for this guy. And, and I said, we've done thousands of these. People just generally will open up a, an account under 501A of the IRS code. I don't know what your code is within the system. There's no lawful requirement for them to have any registration with the Secretary of State because it's known as a PMA, Private Membership Association. Um, so what to do with an account like this is just simply give them a standard business account, charge them monthly. It's not a big deal. We're not going to do a tax-exempt designation on the account because he doesn't, doesn't need one. He's already tax-exempt. And uh, here's my phone number. Here's whatever you need, blah, 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 blah. Thank you so much, sir. We'll get it handled. 20 minutes later, a guy has an account, calls me, thanks me. It's how you approach these people, you know? Stop fighting for something that doesn't exist. You, you are tax exempt, but you don't walk in there and say, I'm a nonprofit. And that's what people are doing. They're converting, I'm a, I'm a nonprofit. No, you're not. No, you're not. Oh, I'm an American national. No, you're not. I'm a national, I'm a state national. No, you're not. You're a US citizen until you've traversed over to be a state of the union citizen. Stop making up terms and terminology of things that you have no understanding in law what they mean and start operating in a form and fashion where you agree with your adversary quickly and you know don't fight them on things listen to everything they have to say and meet them at the gate and have a great conversation and bring them into your chain bring them into your you know every single person that applies at a usps store for a passport goes through these fears i'm like what are you so scared about they're like i don't know man. it's a ups or a USPS worker, it's not a cop, it's not, it's not the federal agent, you know, what are you so scared about, you're just applying for, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm like, oh, then stop, and go and read what you're doing, okay, no, no, I'm ready, I'm ready, no, you're not, no, you're not, you don't have anything to fear, so we always apply, and there's a certain mechanism, and you don't argue with them, you just say, I really appreciate you giving me that advice. I need to have a socialism. My, my pr private counsel made these for me. And uh, we're going to do it as he told me to. And he told me to just say to you, uh, submit it as it is. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I'll tell you what, I'll come back and I'll show you my passport in about a month. And you're going to be blown away that this works. And I'm like, all right, they sign off on the whole thing your friends now and they get it submitted and package it up and boom you know let's let's stop the nuance it's the same thing with hr no we don't need to fight with our with them over our designation just go over their head 
man. Just keep working at the company. Keep going over their head until you figure it out. There's letters and things that you can do to show where they 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 have an obligation and a duty of certain things to still give you employment. And just because you don't have a social doesn't mean you're not allowed to have employment. Um, and those are Supreme Court rulings. So those are there's there's things that we just need to know about who we are. And 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 that's an element of state citizenship that really we need to core down and train on. And we've I've been training on it, you know, but even with all the training that we do, not everybody watches over a thousand or nine hundred plus Q and A's and they don't watch everything that we do. I have got seven or eight hundred normal hour long videos. You can't possibly watch all that. And and it's like, how do you well, you keep doing these reiteration trainings? That's why we put these Q and A's out Mondays and Wednesdays and we post them. Telegram, uh, YouTube, hisadvocates.org, and Odyssey, and one other or two other. But our goal is to just get information out and to change the mindset of people so that they know who they are. Um, but to answer the question again, the ambu ambiguity is on the HR. It's not on us. Um, if for me, I'd never use the social again. I wouldn't put it on any application. I'd just do a letter designating my class and my status, thanking them. I love my job, love working for you guys. You're awesome, but I can't use the social anymore. Um, here you go. If you want, I can give you a, a name of a company that I have and a tax ID number and, uh, and here's a W9 and we can work this way and that might help. And they'd be like, hell yeah, or heck yeah, whatever. You know, um, think about it. There's ways to get things done. Stop saying you can't. Stop limiting yourself before you even get to the problem. Stop looking at it like a problem. You'll get there. You'll get it done.